Let's build an easy to make vertical for 27 and uh, 28 megahertz. Thanks for joining me and if you like what you see, think about clicking that subscribe button and the notification bell for any future videos. So uh, what have I been up to? Well, in the last few days I've been building uh, well, two versions of a, of a tried and tested and a much used vertical antenna for uh, 27 and indeed 28 megahertz. It's known as the T2LT, made out of uh, just one run of RG58 coax. So um, before I go into the two different designs of Tried and the results I got, uh, let's show you the basic designs of this antenna and how to put it together. So then, the uh, antenna itself. Well, let me get my uh, world's class graphics to work for you here. In a minute, I'll show you the antenna as it's been made as well. So the design is quite simple. You've got the inner dielectric, so that's the, uh, the outer shield and the... Um, the braid stripped away as well. So you just got the inner dielectric showing. That's the first top two and a half meters of the antenna. All right. And then you've got the bottom 2.47 meters of the antenna, which is basically the untouched coax. And then the remaining coax is wound around into a choke. And I'll show you the dimensions of that in a second, but you can probably see it here. It's 16 turns of the RG58 going around a 68 millimeter former. And you have whatever coax you need then to go from there to your to your radio okay um so let's uh, see how we uh, put this together just to say this is for 10 meters if you want to use this for 11 meters and i found a tune quite easily on the 11 meters actually with this um if you want to use it on the 11 meters then you could basically just make it a little bit longer and i actually originally made it with about 2.62 meters this top bit here I uh, kept this the same and I found I got a tune on 11 on 27 megahertz quite so This easy. is the antenna itself. So as you can see, this is the strip back in the, in the dielectric. 2.5 meters of this. So you, uh, you take your coax. And by the way, how much coax do you need? Well, you've got a factor in the choke as well. Now the choke, would you believe, will take up about 3.5 meters by itself. So you need at least 8.5 meters of coax just for... The, uh, the radiating part of the antenna and the choke. And then, of course, you need to factor in how much coax you need after that. I think I use something like about 13 metres of coax to give me a bit of a run. And that 13 metres of coax effectively then allows me to have a 10 metre long um, sort of setup from the very tip of the antenna to the very end of the coax where my PL259 is. So um, you need 8.5 metres of coax just to make the choke and the main radiating, radiating part of the antenna for this version of this antenna for 10 meters and then you need to work out how much coax you need after that but don't forget it's all one run of rg58 so as i was saying 2.5 meters the first 2.5 meters you strip back so you strip back the outer um the outer the outer sort of layer and also the inner braid so effectively that's two and a half meters until you get to the Bit you haven't stripped back and that of course is the remaining part of the coax and that goes down again another 2.47 meters and you mark that bit with a bit of tape I don't know if you can see in there okay so you know that's the bottom very bottom part of your actual radiating part of your antenna and what you very what you've basically made here electrically is a, uh, a vertical dipole okay because as with everything else the current maximum is going to be at the center of the antenna so you've made basically a vertical dipole and then you've got the choke now i cover this in red tape just to keep it all together now this version of the t2lt i use as i said earlier a 68 millimeter diameter a uh, bit of uh, pvc pipe what you then do is drill two holes near each end of the pipe and that's to allow you then to feed the antenna through and then construct the choke so what you do and i'll tell you the spacings for the holes in a second so what I do then or what you should do you go you get the top of the antenna the very top of where you've uh, stripped off the um, strip back the dielectric and just feed then start feeding that through one of the holes okay so in this case where were we there we are so you feed it up through one of the holes you pull it up all the way through until you get to the point where you've marked the end of that two point four seven um, meter mark so you've got basically a fraction under five meters of coax through the choke including this bit 
and the untouched bit, that's two and a half meters of this and 2.47 meters of that until you get to the point where the tape has just gone through that hole. Then you stop and what you then do is wind around 16 times, you've got 16 complete turns of the RG58 until on the 16th turn you put it through the hole and then this, bit, this basically then becomes your feed line at the bottom of the choke. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now let's just grab the, the tape measure, so bear with me. Whilst I do that, and let's measure the distance between the holes. So I would cut probably about 12 centimeters of PVC pipe. So I'd cut the length of about 12 centimeters, and the gaps between the holes are. Where are we? Yeah, we're looking at about nine centimetres. So you need about a centimetre and a half from the end. So you can make it a bit longer if you want to. But you're looking at about nine centimetres, okay, between the holes to allow you to do 16 turns. And that should be fine. In fact, it is fine. When I tested it, when I had it up on the pole and I had it plugged into the analyzer, I touched the coax, moved the coax, absolutely no flicker at all on the SWR. So that gives me a pretty good idea that there's very little in the way of any common mode coming back down. Certainly nothing to worry about anyway. Um, now this choke is quite bulky and of course you've got the plastic former as well. Now you could look, if you were really clever of course, to try and make this completely an air round choke by, um, by sliding it off the former. We need to stick it together as you go and with 16 turns that could be quite a challenge but you could do it. Um, but there you are. So that's how you construct it basically. And of course you can do any run of coax from the bottom of the choke onwards, depending on how much you need. As I say, I've got enough there to go from the top to the bottom of a 10 meter fiberglass pole. I've needed to use about 13, 13 and a half meters of coax to do it because the choke takes up three and a half meters by itself. So 13, 14 meters of coax. If you want more, of course you can do more. It's absolutely fine. So there we are, that's the antenna. So what I'll do, I'll just show you some pictures of it up on the, on the pole and we'll have a look at the, uh, at the tuning and um, how broadbanded it is and uh, where we got to tune. Let's have a look at it. So here's the first version, 16 turns of RG58, around a 68 millimeter former for the choke and the antenna is up a seven meter pole, fiberglass pole, so the choke is two meters off the ground. Here it is. So when we first put it up with a 2.62 meter top section, we had a 1.1 SWR down at 27.5 megahertz. Then I chopped 12 centimeters off to bring it back to 2.5 meters top section. You can see now we've got a good SWR down at 28.24 megahertz there. And the 1.5 to 1 SWR bandwidth was pretty decent. Uh, we went all the way down to 27.66 to at 1.5 to 1. That was pretty good. And in a second, we'll see as we go up, uh, here we go, look, 28.6 megahertz. We are still at 1.5 to 1. So almost 1 megahertz of 1.5 to 1 bandwidth. So as you can see, it uh, did pretty well. And, you know, with an extra 10 or 12 centimeters in the top, um, I was able to get a tune on, on 27 megahertz. So 27 megahertz is your thing. Really got on CB and do it on 11 meters, then um, it'll work just fine. And hundreds of operators use these T2LTs on 11 meters. It does a great job for them. I've used it many times in the past. Now, the different version, well, it's not much different at all. It's exactly the same in terms of the um, measurements. You've got two and a half meters of the inner dielectric, 2.47 meters of the untouched coax, but the choke is different. Now the choke, the second one I made, if I can just untangle my antenna here. <laughs> There we are. As you can see, look, exactly the same. Let me just start it off for you. There's the inner dielectric. I'll just put a bit of tape on the end of that, but that doesn't have to be there. Uh, all the way down, look. There we are. Again, I put a bit of tape there to waterproof the joint, which is a good idea to do, actually. Or a bit of heat shrink would be even better. But then you go down to the choke. Now, as you can see here, this choke's markedly different. This is the more traditional way of doing it. So this is five turns of RG58 which I did around a 110 millimeter diameter pipe, like a sewage pipe or uh, that sort of pipe. Now, as you can see with this, I haven't got any of the pipe attached. What I did, because there's only five turns, it was a lot easier for me to basically, um, again, to the mark here, like we did before with the other one, and then attach this to the, to the pipe, tape it down and then wind it round five times. So just five turns. It's a lot lighter, this one. 
in terms of the chokes. That's one benefit of it. And it's a, it's a tried and tested design, this one. The other one we did tends to be used a lot by those who sell these antennas commercially because there's a few guys who do it on eBay. Um, and I think there is a difference. I'll, I'll show you the difference in a second in the tuning. There's a bit of a difference there, so maybe that's a clue. Anyway, here we go. Let me show you how this went. Then we'll put it on exactly the same pole at exactly the same height, seven meter poles. So that both chokes were about two meters off the ground. And uh, let's have a look at the tuning on this one. Yeah, so here's the uh, alternative choke then, the more traditional one. Five turns around 110 meter millimeter former. Uh, 1.3 SWR, 28.42. And we went uh, quite well actually in terms of the bandwidth. Not quite as wide as the other one. Uh, 1.5 to 1 down to 28.05 into CW territory there almost. And uh, as we'll see, it goes up a little bit as well, uh, 1.5 to 1 SWR up to uh, 28.72 megahertz there. So not quite as wide in terms of bandwidth, 1.5 to 1 bandwidth as the other one. Of course, one thing I didn't mention uh, before we took you to the footage of the, uh, of the second one there was that the amount of coax you need for this choke is a lot less. Um, I think, what was it, five turns around 110 mil former. So roughly... Off the top of my head, that's going to be something like about 1.8 meters. So you're looking at around 1.7 meters less than the other one. There we go. So if you, you are struggling for coax, then uh, this might save you a bit of, bit of length of coax. But just to make you aware of that, which is one of the reasons why you've got less coax and also you haven't got the plastic former like the other one. So to me, this design has a lot more um, lightweight property about it, which might make it a little bit more desirable in terms of using it um, portable, but who knows. So there you have it then, two good designs, um, tried and tested designs. I'll be trying them out. As I said on a previous video a couple of days ago, I'll be looking to maybe start a 10 meter net soon. So it'll be nice to get up on the hill again when it all happens. Um, and yeah, I'll be looking to deploy these. I might even do a bit of a shootout actually to see which design, if any, is better. There's a difference, isn't there, in the uh, in the amount of in in the relative uh, broadness of the tuning. So you've got a slightly uh, wider uh, tuning, 1.5 to 1 SWR, with the the uh, the one with the 68 um, mil choke and the 16 turns compared to this one. Now, does that mean that there's a slight lack of efficiency with that one compared to this one? I don't know. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, in terms of cost of making one of these, well, it's relatively cheap. So, if, say, for example, you took the other version where you needed 13 or 14 metres of coax. Um, if you bought a 50 millimetre run of RG58, or 100 metre run so of RG58, it would cost you about 50 quid. Something like that. So, 13, 14 metres would cost you about six, seven pounds. Um, slap in a PL259 which might cost you a couple of pounds and uh, if you could find something with that sort of diameter to make either one of these two chokes then you want to buy a pipe believe but uh, uh, we'll be talking here we're probably talking certainly something well under 10 pounds aren't we all right you slap a bit of insulation tape on it job done so 10 pounds easily will make you one of these and uh, they're very good effective antennas uh, the guys on 27 megs use them all the time and uh, they swear by them, especially portable. And uh, there's no difference on 10 really, just a slight difference in the measure as we've seen. And uh, it does a uh, pretty decent job. Well, I hope that's been instructive. Thanks for watching and uh, you take care. And uh, maybe I'll catch you on the air sometime. Hopefully, you never know, on 10 metres if conditions pick up. Cheers for watching. And if you like what you see, by the way, click subscribe. It'd be nice to have you on board. Take care now from uh, G5TM. Take care. Bye-bye.